get to more phone calls coming up. Albert Breer, senior NFL reporter, lead content strategist, Monday morning quarterback. Albert's on vacation. Fritzy still tracked him down. And uh, Albert, kind enough to join us on the program. Albert, thank you for yeah. uh, allowing us to interrupt your, uh, your vacation there. No, it's okay. Like we had, uh, we actually were going to be set up at the house that we rented, and my kid asked to go to the aquarium. And this is the time of year I can't really say no, so I'm outside the aquarium trying to find an um, <laughs> an internet connection, which that probably everybody in like a you know a 500 yard radius is like, what the hell is that guy doing walking around with a laptop in his hand? So, <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. We won't keep no you problem. long. What do you expect to happen tomorrow during the uh, uh, hearing for Deshaun Watson? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think people have sort of mistaked it to be that, um, you know, Sue L. Robinson, the former U.S. District Court judge, is just going to hear Deshaun's case. He's also She's also going to hear the case from the league, and she's going to hear the case from the union. And um, everybody knows that the, the, the sides have an idea of what everybody's going to be presenting. And, um, you know, I, I think the league has been um, strident in wanting a year suspension. My understanding is, that the settlement talks collapsed over the league's insistence on a year suspension. Um, and now they're going to be looking for something indefinite um, where he'd have to apply to get back in after a year. Um, and then the union is going to ask for much lighter punishment on the basis of the league's case, not being as strong as a lot of people think it is. And the key component to the union's case is the league tomorrow is only going to be bringing the cases of five women. So we've heard about the 24 women who've sued and obviously other women um, who've alleged wrongdoing on uh, on on the on the part of of Watson, um, but the league is only going to be bringing the cases of five women tomorrow, um, and you know, and then of course the union's case is that based on that and based on what we've seen with owners like Jerry Jones, Robert Kraft, and especially Dan Snyder, um, a year of suspension is way too much. Um, and then you know, after that, I think as you know. Um, she'll take that under advisement, make a recommendation on penalty, and then it'll either go to the commissioner or his designee. The NFL, is there a max that they could ask for? Can you hear me, Albert? I got you, yeah. Um, is, what would be the max you think the NFL could ask for? Well, the NFL is going to ask for an indefinite suspension, which um, I, the term in the CBA is actually called banishment, um, which we've seen players get that in the past. And, and essentially what that means is the player's gone for the period for a period of a year, and it's almost like he's not in the league, right? Like, so his contract tolls, he's not paid. Um, and then, you know, after he's served a season, then he has the opportunity to apply for reinstatement. And in a lot of cases, it does wind up being a year suspension. But that's what the NFL is going to be looking at. Whereas, you know, obviously the union is going to look at it and say um, that, again, based on the cases, you know, of, of Kraft, of Jones, of, of Snyder, um, and the way the league handled those, um, you know, a, a banishment penalty would, would be way too much. And, again, like my, my understanding is the settlement talks centered on the idea of a year suspension and Watson wasn't going to go for that. The league, you know, basically offered that as less than banishment. They just serve a year suspension and you're back in. Um, And the league wouldn't move off of its, uh, of its position there. Um, Watson's team obviously wouldn't go for the year suspension. So the settlement talks collapsed and we have our hearing tomorrow. Uh, Who gets traded first Baker Mayfield or Jimmy G? You know, this gets interesting now um, just because there are some moving parts with both guys. Obviously, with Baker, you know, the Deshaun situation, as much as – and look, like Baker has made it clear to everybody around him, he's done with the Browns, and um, this is unfixable. And even if the Browns double back to him and uh, like the, after, say, Watson is suspended for a year – um, he wouldn't want to go back there. It may still present the best opportunity. And I don't know that the Browns would reverse course on this because they certainly haven't operated over the last three months, um, like a team that was leaving the door open at all. Um, but if it is a year, I mean, would they leave that door open? Maybe. Or reopen that door, I mean, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas with Jimmy G, I just think once his shoulder heals, the dynamic changes a little bit. And then, as has been the case with Mayfield, um, the money comes into play. And Jimmy's in a little bit of a different spot than Baker is. Baker has that $18.8 million fully guaranteed. So, 
all he has to do is sit there and he, he he'll get it, you know. Whereas with Jimmy, that money doesn't become guaranteed till week one. So, you know, if another team wants to come in and negotiate with him and say, we're willing to trade for you, but we're only willing to pay X, I, like Jimmy might feel compelled to take it because if the Niners cut him, well then, you know, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty on how much money he's going to make in 2022. So I, I would say the likelihood is, and the likelihood has been that Baker would get moved first, but just the situation with Deshaun's, um, you know, case, um, you know, going through this week. And then, uh, you know, I think the, the health of Jimmy's shoulder and Jimmy being able to throw within the next couple of weeks could change the dynamic. Talking to Albert Breer, senior NFL reporter, lead content strategist for the Monday morning quarterback. Feels like every year this time, Daniel Snyder is somehow stepping in it and somehow he steps out of it. But um, is this different this year? There are two things that I, I think Roger Goodell has done over the last six months that make this a little bit different, Dan. Um, and I think you and I both know Roger's very, very careful and calculated on everything he says about any owner. Um, and, you know, I, I, you know, back at the Super Bowl, and I think we've talked about this before, Roger actually detailed for everyone at a press conference the process for ousting an owner. I I may have been the only one. I was stunned when he did that because that to me signals somebody signed off on him saying that somebody was okay with him saying that. So that's number one. And then last week he continuously in front of Congress positioned Daniel Snyder being out of day-to-day operations for the commanders as a suspension. Snyder's team quietly has pushed back very hard against that notion. So I think you add one thing to the other, right? You add Roger's willingness to talk about how to oust an owner to Roger positioning Snyder's absence from the team as a suspension um, and as a punishment for everything that went on in that building the last 20 years. And I think you're starting to see where I don't know if the owners are going to have the stomach to vote one of their own out because I don't think any of them want to set that precedent. They don't want anybody looking through their trash to, um, you know, and so I, I don't know that they have the appetite for that. But what I do think could happen over the coming months, and I think you may be starting to see signs of this with the way Roger's operating, is the temperature might get turned up on Snyder, where they try to test him and stuff keeps coming out on him, and maybe they try to see if there's a way to force him out without having to vote him out, where it gets to the point where it's untenable for him to own the team anymore, and he decides, I can get four or five billion for this team. I don't need this trouble anymore. I'm out. He's obviously already shown that the threshold for that's going to be really, really high. Um, he didn't walk away the way that Jerry Richardson walked away a few years ago when you know his own scandal happened in Carolina. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the owners in the league try to turn up the pressure on Daniel Snyder to sell um, before taking any sort of action on voting on him on on, on his viability as an owner. Warren Sapp made some headlines suggesting that Colin Kaepernick's workout with the Raiders was a disaster. Have you heard anything <laughs> to the contrary? I, you know, when I heard, I, like, coming out of the, the workout, really what I heard was he's in shape and he looked fine. Uh, but, like, I, I don't think, I didn't hear it was a disaster at the same time I didn't hear it was any sort of revelation, you know? I, like the the sense I got from the Raiders people is it's about where we expected it to be, um, based on you know what you'd seen um, over the last few years, the clips of him throwing and everything else. Still has a really strong arm. Again, he's in shape. Um, you know they were able to test him in certain ways. Do he look great? I mean, maybe not, but I think you know he certainly looked like he could play quarterback in the NFL, given you know enough ramp up time to do it. Um, so like that was sort of what I can't heard coming out of it. I didn't hear what Warren Sapp heard, but I also didn't hear that this was some sort of like light turning on for the Raiders, where it's like, wow, how was this guy out of the league the last few years? Uh, go back to the aquarium. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks for joining. I'm sorry about the connection issues, Dan. We'll do better next time. I promise. Next time, uh, next time I'll be on a on, on a more solid uh, connection here. Thank you, Albert. That's uh, and Albert. Everybody can stop, and, and everybody can stop looking at me weird around here now. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Breer. It looks like he's talking to nobody on his phone somewhere. 
on his vacation. Senior NFL reporter, lead content strategist at the uh, Monday Morning Quarterback. Fritzy goes, um, hey, Albert's on his vacation. I said, oh, tell him that we don't want to bother him. He goes, no, he wants to know what time that he can <laughs> join us. And uh, we appreciate him. Uh, I think he's one of the bright reporters covering the game. 